The American actor Selma Blair has been open about her experience battling multiple sclerosis, and she underwent a treatment hematopoietic stem cell transplant in 2019, and in the documentary Introducing Selma Blair, she talks about her experiences, but apparently it did not work for her, and more recently she had a major relapse, new MRI lesions, and is now on a different medication. I want to read you this article, and this this is actually from a investing website, Fierce Pharma. So they're talking about it from the perspective of whether or not you should invest in the drug company that manufactures the new drug Mavenclad. I don't really care about that. I report no conflict of interest, but they make some interesting points about her medical history. I'll talk about hematopoietic stem cell transplant and the new drug Mavenclad. No cruel intentions here. Merck's pharma arm has recruited actor Selma Blair for a collaboration around multiple sclerosis treatment Mavenclad. Blair, best known for her roles in turn of the millennium classics like Legally Blonde, where she played the villain, and Cruel Intentions, and she was also in the Hellboy series, has spoken openly about living with relapsing MS since shortly after her 2018 diagnosis. Now they talk about the marketing a little bit. Blair Blair first began speaking about her positive experience with Mavenclad last summer in a video shared with Us Weekly in August. She first described how she underwent, quote, a major relapse after a 2019 bone marrow transplant. So what is hematopoietic stem cell transplant for MS? Now, this is not actually a stem cell treatment despite the ambiguous name. We're not giving stem cells which could regrow nerve tissue. This it has been studied. There are experimental mesenchymal stem cell treatments for MS, unproven in my opinion. This is different in this treatment chemotherapy regimens are given which wipe out the immune system and sometimes reboot the immune system. And because we think MS is caused by lymphocytes, B and T cells that are confused and attacking the nervous system, sometimes this leads to long-term remission and sometimes even dramatic improvement. It's a completely legitimate treatment. It's not necessarily that widely used because many doctors don't have a lot of experience with it. It has significant side effects like infections, anemia, hair loss, infertility, that kind of thing. And there are other disease modifying therapies that are available that can be highly effective. So it's not widely used, but it is a legitimate treatment and some people have great results. And certainly I've had some of my own patients have great results. Now she received the treatment from Dr. Richard Burt, who I've previously interviewed on this channel, who's well known to perform this treatment for MS in the United States. I don't know what conditioning regimen she received, but I believe he most commonly used uses cyclophosphamide plus antithymocyte globulin, which has been reported to be safer but potentially less effective than some other conditioning regimens such as BEAM. However, it's a little bit controversial what the best conditioning regimen is. The article continues, that led her to seek out a new doctor who recommended she try Mavenclad. And apparently the new doctor is Dr. Regina Berkovich, who's actually my former fellowship mentor at USC. It's a small world, but just to be clear, I have no personal knowledge of Selma Blair, have never met her in any way, shape, or form, but Dr. Berkovich is an experienced MS specialist. Now, cladribine is a very unique medication. It's a medication that blocks DNA synthesis and is toxic to rapidly dividing cells, especially the lymphocytes, the B and T cells, the cells implicated in initiating inflammation in multiple sclerosis. And you take these pills in an unusual way. So it's weight-based dosing and you take the pill typically daily for five days and there's different number of tablets based on your weight. Then you do nothing for approximately 24 to 28 days. And then you take another series of five days of treatments and then you do nothing for the rest of the year. And then the next year you complete a second course again two treatments roughly once a month 
for five days. And sometimes people can experience long-term remission after that and may not need to take a third course, though they can if it's necessary or change to a different medication. So I think it's pretty clear that Selma Blair likes the idea of not having to see doctors indefinitely and take medication indefinitely. She's hoping to take something that will result in a long-term remission such that she doesn't have to take ongoing treatment. I presume this was her motivation in addition to the recommendation of her doctor. Now let's take a closer look at Mavenclad. So Mavenclad is not as aggressive as hematopoietic stem cell transplant, but it does have side effects. The white blood cells drop and reach their nadir or lowest point about two to three months of, after taking the medication, but then they come back all the way to normal. It's an immunosuppressant. It can cause infections. It doesn't typically cause significant hair loss. It can sometimes cause skin problems, and it's been reported to increase the risk of cancer, though in one study the risk was not dramatically increased in absolute terms. There are also a large number of potential drug-drug interactions with Mavenclad, such as with common medications like ibuprofen and gabapentin and various other medicines, so that can be a challenge in someone with multiple comorbidities. Let's look at some of the results of clinical trials. This is from the CLARITY trial, Mavenclad versus placebo in relapsing MS, which is what Selma Blair reportedly has. They're looking at relapses. These are attacks that people with MS can get, such as having pain and vision loss in one eye or numbness or weakness of an area of the body or double vision vertigo or imbalance, which often develops over several days to weeks. And they're looking at the annualized relapse rate or relapses per person per year. And it was 0.33 with placebo, but 0.14, a roughly 58% reduction with the 3.5 milligram per kilogram dose of cladribine, which is what is currently used. So it was more than 50% effective in stopping relapses. For preventing disability, it was not quite as effective. This is confirmed disability progression. This is where someone with MS is evaluated with a disability scale called EDSS, and they're shown to have progression from their baseline, and it wasn't just random fluctuation because on a follow-up examination, they were still worse than their baseline. And you could see people with placebo, the blue line, acquire disability over time, but there's less accumulation of disability with cladribine by about 33%, though this was statistically significant p-value of 0.02. Let's look at some long-term data. This is a follow-up of the CLARITY study, along with a few other trials with cladribine called Onward and Oracle MS over a five-year period, and around 60% were completely free of relapses, no relapses during the entire five-year period. In terms of preventing progression of disability, one of the three studies, the Oracle study, the green line, 80% were free of disability progression after five years. But for the other two studies, it was only around 50%. So half had at least some progression of disability over five years. Though the majority were still able to walk independently. This looks at people who had an EDSS, expanded disability status score, less than six, meaning that they were able to walk without a cane for at least 100 meters. They started off all walking because that was required to get into these clinical trials and then some of them required some kind of gait assistance at some point. In one of the trials, the Oracle trial, they all were walking without canes or wheelchairs or walkers by the end, but in the others whose trials, some people developed walking disabilities requiring some assistance. Perhaps least optimistic is the data on attrition. This is looking at the number of people who have not taken another multiple sclerosis disease modifying therapy, and you can see by the the end of the five years, most people had taken a different drug in all three of the studies. So this isn't as effective as hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Many people do go on to need future treatments at some point. We'll go back to the article. So I took that, a couple of short series of tablets, and in two years, your therapy is done. Now, as I showed you from that data, that's not necessarily true. Some people need a third course at some point or take other treatments, but hopefully it will work out for her. She said in the video, noting that she was in remission at that point, it's called Mavenclad, and I don't know anyone that's on it, and I wanted to let people know 
that that is what I take. And I think she's actually doing a significant service to the multiple sclerosis community. She is spreading awareness and making people aware of things. And I'd be interested to know your take on her potentially receiving compensation to do advertising for the drug company. Of course, it's perfectly legal. She continued, it's been amazing and it helped my movement and speech so much and it's allowed me to have a great summer. A few months later, Blair attended a Hollywood event without the aid of a cane or service dog. Now in the past, there are a lot of videos of her walking with assistance with a cane. She's often relied on in recent years. In an interview with Variety at the late November event, she reiterated that she'd started feeling really better this last year and expressed surprise at how dramatically her condition had improved following the transplant and new treatment regimen, saying, I just had no strength and I didn't think I'd get to feel this grounded. So if you haven't seen the documentary introducing Salma Blair, it does show that she did improve dramatically after hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And some people receiving that treatment do in fact have a long-term remission and don't need further therapies. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for her. She apparently did have a relapse. And in other articles, it actually describes she had new lesions shown on MRI scans. And so she was recommended to start a new therapy and so good so far. And I do hope she continues to do well. And I appreciate her sharing her story with the MS community. Questions or comments in the notes below.